my wheels got going really quickly and I decided that this would be a great platform for making a tiny home. People peek in and look and quite often they'll ask who our builder is. I'm like, I'm married to him. It's not an economic endeavor. It's more of a creative outlet for me. I really like it. Hi, my name is Tanya Lester. And I'm Craig Lester. And this is our van, Valerie. Welcome to our kitchen. Over here is our cooking space and where we prepare food. We have an induction cooktop. However, we found we don't use it that often. Uh, we use a gas burner and I'll show you that when we get to the drawers. These rubber mats are amazing. We can leave these things right up here on the counter while we're driving down back roads, hills, turns, everything, and things stay right in place. Have our veggies here. Love having the specific space for our trash and recycle. Um, this is, works out great because again, it tucks away and it's right here where you're preparing your food. So love that space. Along here, we have three shelving areas. Moving to the back side of the drawers. Our top is our silverware drawer, all compartmentalized as well. Craig loves to be super organized. This is our gas burner and then our spice rack. Again, everything has its own little compartment, keeps things from rattling down the road. Got our cups and then plates and bowls. Again, everything so it fits and minimizes rattling. With this van, we originally had a TV here and then we found we never used the TV. So we removed the TV and as a Christmas gift, I think it was, Craig surprised me with this collage of our first year in the van. Up here, we have all of our food storage that we went through and have in uh, their own compartment, Tupperware dishes, so we keep everything separate. Got to have your mirror in our kitchen bathroom area here. Sink, great strainer, great for fruits and vegetables as well as drying dishes. So when we first got the van, it was just a cargo van. No holes, no windows except for the front. Craig put the windows in so they can open one at a time. Also living in Washington, uh, they flare out so it keeps the rain out so we could keep windows open at night for that extra air. Up here is our desk area. We actually have a his and hers and this one's extra long. So although the countertop is further back, we still get full space of use of the table here. This also works great in the winter time when we're snowboarding. We can spin the chairs around. We can have friends in here to eat with us and put our snow boots on right by the door so we're not tracking the snow in all over the place. So having both seats being able to spin around has been a lot of help. Up here, storage space, again, all bamboo, beautiful edging. Lots of storage up here, it goes all the way forward. The one thing we're looking to do different up here next time, we're gonna put another shelving in here and go lower. We have our fan here, great for when we're sleeping at night, we can open our side windows, brings a draft through, and probably the best investment we ever made is this nifty um, cover from Van Essentials. Magnets right up there, so when you're going down the road, super quiet, because again, Craig doesn't like the noise. So that was a great investment. We'll definitely use this again on the next build. Craig and I met and he he had a beautiful house. It was nice, but that's not what really attracted me. It was the van parked in the driveway and finding out that he lived out of his shipping container for a while. And I lived out of a camp trailer for a little while after my divorce. So that was the thing that really connected the two of us. And I think a week into our relationship, we were taking our first trips in this van and that first year we spent 49 nights in it and I absolutely love it, cannot get enough. It's a great way to see things that you wouldn't normally see, meet people. I like to talk a little bit, so I make friends everywhere I go and it's just a great way to live life. So for me, I've always been drawn to this vehicular, um, thing. I, for a long time, I wanted a Volkswagen Synchro four-wheel drive. I've been drawn to the mountains. I kind of have always enjoyed the winter 
aspect and then camping. Um, and I, you know, sportsmobile is the only other thing that really kind of appealed to me. And then sometime about five years ago, I discovered, oh, they make a Sprinter van that is four wheel drive. And my wheels got going really quickly. And I decided that this would be a great platform for making a tiny home. As it turns out, the Sprinter van is a great platform. It's not a super off-road vehicle, but it does work very well in the wintertime. And it's the 170 wheelbase is big enough that we get all the creature comforts that we need. Uh, we really don't feel like we need much more than this. Uh, I have no need to drive a 30 or 35 or 40 foot motorhome. I like this. It's, it's comfortable and we seem to function well within it. This is our living area. The panels here, this is just quarter inch plywood covered with foam and then a fabric. These vans are like a big drum inside. When you first get them, you realize they're pretty loud inside and they need as much soft surfaces to absorb all that sound. That's kind of why I chose cork for the ceiling. The cork is a very good sound dampening uh, material. Um, it's kind of unique. A lot of people like it. I like it. Uh, it's, it's a great product. The couch area can double as a bed. Some We've taken Tanya's daughter with us uh, snowboarding a lot and she, she can actually sleep there. It works for that. Yeah, it's nice that it does, it does do many purposes. It's an area where we can sleep. It's an area where we have dinner and it's an area where we can and just lounge and we do have our cassette toilet here it's just a regular old cassette uh, i choose this one it works best for us and we'll do this again in our next van uh, we have a hydronic heating system it's a diesel fired boiler it heats our hot water and um, the, the cabin air for here and all of the components for that are underneath this seat the boiler uh, is under the van, it's diesel fired, so the, it comes from the diesel tank within the vehicle. This center section here breaks down. We have a little dining room table. This spins around and makes into a little dinette. That's our heat register there. Our hot air comes through that. Um, I've got electrical outlet. This little drawer right here is actually our dirty clothes. And then on this side, we've got all of our electrical. I've got our thermostat, S-bar, diesel heater controller is next to it. Um, we've got our Max Air Fan Remote, a Victron color control, and our battery monitor is all right there along with some USB plugs. The uh, whole electrical system is uh, Victron, and we have 300 amp um, Battleborn batteries. And uh, our charge controller for our solar panels is back here um, behind a little door, along with our fuse panel. Our breaker panel for our 110 is here. And then under the seat, you'll see the um, battery to battery charger. So when the van is running, the van itself charges the batteries. Um, we've got three Battleborn batteries down here. All of our shutoff switches and fuses and breakers are down there. Um, on the roof, we've got uh, 320 watts of solar, which on days like this or times like this, we can go indefinitely. It really powers the van for, yeah, indefinitely. We never have to plug in. One thing that's super important for both Craig and I is we do not want to have to make our bed every day. Uh, we don't mind putting the pulling the sheets up after we get up, but we didn't want to have anything we had to set up or break down. So this works really well for us. We do sleep across and we have flare bump outs on either side. Headspace up here, again, built in USB plug so we can plug our foot phones in at night. The one thing I would do different in the next van is maybe put a shelving in here so our phones can actually sit in the window space where right now they tuck in under here. Our bed space also currently acts as our window covering area. And then when we pull into someplace at night, whether it's out in the woods or in a crowded city lot, we can just quickly pull these out. They all snap into place. And we do have our bedroom lights on a separate switch of the rest of the van, along with a dimmer. Up here is our closed storage area. 
We have his and hers. We have a nifty hanging area. So uh, we have actually taken the van on formal events and I have my ball gown hanging here and his suit. So we can hang those up and keep them from getting damaged. So who says you can't be van life and still dress up and have a adult night out? When I was thinking about doing this, I obviously I went out and bought a van. I kind of, before I even bought the van, I knew what I was going to do. I had a very good uh, sketched out plan. I like to um, sketch a little bit, nothing in super detail. Um, most of it I would say is in my head. And the only thing that was super stressful for me was, was cutting in that first window. And <laughs> I will say that, you know, you drill a bunch of holes and you cut that hole out and there's, uh, there's just no going back once you do that. That was stressful the first time since then it's pretty easy. Um, I love the build process. I guess for me, there's a, there's an element of satisfaction uh, that comes from our creative side as well as the actual just constructing side. And I, I really didn't know that about myself um, as a young adult, um, that I was a very creative person. I've been a carpenter and now I'm a general contractor, but um, there is a creative element to it that I really enjoy. Um, the the, the design process, the sketching things out, um, I really, really charges me up as a person. It's something I like to do. And I hope that uh, in my retirement, this is something that I'd like to continue to do. And not so much as a, it's not an economic endeavor, it's more of a creative outlet for me. I really like it. So outside, we've got an awning. When we're using the awning in, in an area where we're gonna have it up for a few days, I'll usually stake it like this, put the poles out. Uh, if it's just for lunch or whatnot, we just yeah. mount it against these poles, mount against the van. This is our exterior table. This has two hinges on it, so it just drops down. And we eat lunch at this all the time when we're out. Okay, in the back, like I mentioned here, our chairs that go out there from our dinette go in this drawer. Um, I got an outlet that charges both the bikes. We have uh, two electric bikes in here and they're both on drawer slides so that they can be accessed easily. Uh, 40 gallons of water in the middle. Um, I've got my lights. We've got an exterior shower, which we use today. This is where we keep our barbecue which is out on the side of the van now we've also got a collapsible fire pit you know it's pretty organized we have a what i call a storm curtain which snaps in here and snaps around there and we don't get snow or rain blowing in the back of the van so and on the outside of this door we've got our spare tire the spare tire used to be underneath now there's a 28 gallon auxiliary fuel tank under there uh, from agile off roads we carry 52 gallons of diesel which is super nice um, on this door we have kind of all kinds of stuff um, in the summertime when we can't build a campfire we have a, a propane gas fire um, in the winter time we usually take this off i'll put extra fuel up there and i can we do have a generator that we can put in here occasionally if we know we're going to be going on a long long winter trip, we will use that. Know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Come to events like Overland Expo or Van Expos and people are so willing to help you out. So um, sometimes you can trade your services of knowledge in one area to help them out and they'll in turn help you out. Uh, don't forget, be afraid to ask questions, watch a lot of YouTube, um, but know your limits too. Sometimes it costs a lot more money to fix your problem than had you just spent the extra time and money up front to get help. We're lucky we live in a time where all this stuff is accessible to everybody and everything you want to know how to do is on YouTube and I'm a big fan of it. And it's not as easy as it looks either. So YouTube is great, uh, but being mindful again, if you're under time or under a financial, plan it out, budget it out, and uh, be ready for those obstacles that pop up and just 
move with them. Thank you so much for coming into our home and allowing Craig and I to show you around. We've really enjoyed our time. We are getting ready to venture on building a whole van together with each other. And you can follow us on that on Craig and Tanya on Instagram and hope to get a YouTube channel in there as well. See you on the road and can't wait to say hi to you out there.